this is not getting discussed on the mainstream media. Not only are they wrong legally, but the fact that they would do this is outrageous. This is an overreaction and really nonsense. How would you react if this was your son or your daughter? It's the offense of knowing the truth. It's the offense of having an alternate world view. Saying God bless you to someone is not a violation of the law. Welcome to the broadcast, everyone. And this is a special broadcast because we've got a situation that's developing at Vanderbilt University. Now imagine this. You've got a Christian college club. They're all over the country. A requirements passed that says that in your club, you're required to allow anyone to be a member and anyone to serve as an officer. So a group of atheists come into the club. In fact, there's more atheists than there are Christian students. They take over the club and they remove the Christian officers. Sounds implausible. Unfortunately, it's happening at Vanderbilt University and in other universities around the country. But Vanderbilt has been the center of a storm on this issue of who controls the content of a Christian club. Can you imagine if your church was to have operating under the same rules where they would be required to allow anyone to become a member, even if someone did not believe in the Christian faith? Again, it sounds implausible, it sounds ridiculous, but the reality is this is what's happening at Vanderbilt. David French is a senior counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, and David, you've been handling the case. Let's set the framework of exactly what has taken place here at Vanderbilt. Well, what happened here is last year, several Christian clubs submitted a constitution for approval, and the university said, we're not going to allow you to exist on campus because your constitution says that your leaders have to be Christian. So a Christian club, like I guess it would be the same for the Republican club or the Democratic club, are making the statement that if you're going to be the head of our club, you've got to subscribe to our doctrine of faith or you have to agree to our political position if Republican or Democrat or Christian club, Baptist student union, could require a Baptist to be the head of it. Exactly. And, and these clubs even allowed anyone to join. I mean, anyone could join, but they said, if you're going to lead, you had to agree with the basis of faith. It's just like if a Baptist church is looking for a new pastor, they're going to look for a Baptist pastor. So the Jewish Student Union uh, on campus at Vanderbilt, the Jewish Students, Hillel Club, uh, meets. They're authorized to meet on campus. They submit their constitution. They require that for you to be the leader of the club, the Jewish Student Club, you have to be Jewish. That shouldn't be a problem but it is for Vanderbilt. Well, Vanderbilt's saying that no religious club of any faith, whether it's Muslim, Jewish, Christian, can limit their leadership to people who share their faith. Now, the That seems absurd, is, by the way. Oh, it, it defies common sense. And the fact of the matter is you couldn't get away with that anywhere else in the country except on a campus. It's astonishing. So what's been the reaction? We're going to actually hear from students in the next segment of the broadcast, but what's been the reaction first among the Board of Trustees? Because the angle of attack here is to talk to the Board of Trustees. Well, the Board of Trustees so far has been essentially ratifying the university's actions. They have not taken action to get this under control. They have continued to support the administration. And, and let's remember, Vanderbilt is a huge university in the middle of the Bible Belt. Yeah. It is essentially saying to its community that we don't want Christian students here. You, you have to ask yourself, why did they do this? Why did Vanderbilt decide that when it came to these Christian clubs, you couldn't require Christians to be in leadership? It's ideology. They literally think, and then have even compared these Christian students to racists, to segregationists, for wanting Christian leadership for Christian clubs. It's a pure ideological power play. Let's talk about reaction among the students. What's been the reaction among the student group so far? What are, let's get the student reaction, then talk about the particulars of what we're going to do here. Well, the student reaction has been amazing. This has been tried at other universities, and the students have rolled over many times. But at Vanderbilt, hundreds of Christian students have mobilized to oppose it. It's been incredibly encouraging to see the Christian students say, you know what, I belong here. I have a place here at this university, too. So they have showed up at town halls. They've had prayers outside of board meetings. They have written letters. They have been energized to defend their religious liberty. I want everybody to understand, though, what's at stake. I mean, this is, put yourself in the situation. You're a student at a university. You have a Christian club, a Christian student group. The administration tells you, you can meet under one circumstance and one requirement. You have to allow non-Christians, not only to be members of the club, which they allow, but to actually lead the club. So the atheist group would lead the Christian club. It makes no sense. The Muslim student group would be run by a Jewish, Jewish students. It makes no sense. What we want to do is mobilize hundreds of thousands of Americans from around the country, from all 50 states, to tell Vanderbilt University, hey, let these students, let these students have their clubs, let them have their student organizations, and don't require them to have non-Christians in leadership of the Christian club. It's that simple. 
If you want to help these students out, you can do that by calling us at 1-877-989-2255. We're going to send a petition to Vanderbilt University, and we'll talk more about the legal work that's going on as well. But again, 877-989-2255. That's 877-989-2255 or aclj.org. A college campus should be a place where all students are accepted and their religious beliefs respected. Unfortunately, that's not how Vanderbilt University is treating a Christian student group. Vanderbilt has instituted a policy that requires religious student groups to accept leaders who may not share their faith or may even be opposed to their faith. The school is requiring Christian groups to be open even to atheist leadership. And what's worse, the school has outrageously compared these Christian groups to segregationists. The ACLJ is mobilized and is advising Christian student groups at Vanderbilt, concerned parents and alumni. We need your voice in support of their religious liberty. It's time that Vanderbilt put a halt to this behavior and reverse this discriminatory policy immediately. Sign on to our petition for students' religious rights. Tell Vanderbilt University that discrimination against student groups is unacceptable. Add your name to our petition now. Call 1-877-989-2255 or online aclj.org. Well, welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. If you're just joining us, an unusual situation, although becoming more frequent. At Vanderbilt University, Nashville, Tennessee, a very prestigious university, there is a requirement that if you are going to meet on campus as a Christian club, that you have to be open to leadership that is non-Christian. That is, a non-Christian could be put in charge of your Christian club. It sounds absolutely absurd, but that's exactly what is happening at Vanderbilt University. By the way, same thing for the Jewish student group. Jewish student group meets on campus. They want to have a Jewish student to lead the club. University says, I'm sorry, you have to open up your leadership to non-Jewish students. So a Muslim student could be the head of the Jewish club and vice versa. The same thing could happen to the Muslim club. It sounds absolutely absurd, but this is exactly what's going on at Vanderbilt. Now, I want you to take direct action. We are going to petition the administration and the Board of Trustees at Vanderbilt University to allow these Christian clubs to meet without this requirement in place. And that's where you come in. We need your help. We want to be able to hear from all 50 states. So you go to your phones right now, 1-877-989-2255. That's 877-989-2255 or aclj.org to stand up for these students. David, let me ask you this. What's, let's talk. We're going to hear from the students in just a moment. Tell us about the student reaction so far. Students have been energized against this. The students are utterly opposed to the university trampling on their religious liberty. They chose Vanderbilt, many of them, because they knew that there was a vibrant Christian community here. And now the administration is literally comparing them to racists and segregationists for standing up for their most basic religious liberty rights. All right, let's take a listen. We've got the students on tape. Take a look. It was originally a non-discrimination policy that within the student handbook, included within it protection for religious association. Out of nowhere, with no warning or no public statement, it was revealed that they eliminated the protection for freedom of religious association from the student handbook and decided that they were then going to start implementing a non-discrimination policy that they claimed was in place all along. When they were trapped by some of their own inconsistent statements across the board to various organizations that asked for just a written policy for what is your policy and what does it mean, they then changed it to an all-comers policy. I'm concerned now that because of Vanderbilt's uh, actions, they indeed now are, in my opinion, discriminating against the Christian organizations. So now groups uh, such as the Navigators that I'm involved in um, or the Christian Fraternity can no longer use values or beliefs as uh, requirements for their leadership. If we're really an organization with religious beliefs, it's not only important but necessary that our leaders share those beliefs. Across the board for all of our organizations, we're going to allow for everybody to have the opportunity to join uh, for membership and leadership within every organization. I feel like the bigger threat is that we lose the, the right to, to be able to freely choose our leaders. It's going to devolve, in my opinion, into uh, a case where if a non-Christian isn't elected, it's going to be assumed that there was discrimination. We believe these things and therefore we do not think we should be discriminated against based on wanting to put these beliefs into action. It is a lack of common sense. I mean, it would make sense that an organization should be able to appoint the leaders based upon their core beliefs of the organization. But what Vanderbilt is saying with this policy is they, that they don't recognize the value of having organizations who want to support students in their religious convictions. 
My fear is that this would be the beginning of further clampdown by the university on freedoms uh, that students have and maybe ultimately freedoms that faculty have. I think uh, it's important to point out that all of these organizations historically want and invite everyone who wants to come, whether it's a Protestant, Catholic, uh, youth organizations, that's why they're here. They're saying that those organizations uh, cannot set standards uh, and expect people to hold the same values as the Christian organization. And what that does, I think over time, is weaken those organizations. The Christian organizations are not discriminating against people. They're saying you're not qualified. It's like me saying I'm qualified to be legal counsel at Vanderbilt even though I don't have a law degree and I've never worked for a university. No, I'm not qualified to do that job. They're not discriminating against me because they won't allow me to do that job. It's just I'm not qualified. Um, I have the right to not just be a Christian on this campus but to be led by fellow Christians. There is that chance that a certain group of people might say, hey, I don't really respect this point of view and I'm just going to show them that I don't care for that by going and joining that organization and then making sure that I'm appointed to leadership and thus disbanding the group. Um, and Vanderbilt really hasn't said that they would go protect those groups if that were to happen. For example, if there was a um, member who uh, was in leadership and then changed their beliefs because of uh, any kind of life experiences and came back and wanted to continue in their leadership position and lead the group in a different direction, uh, the group could not ask that leader to step down. Um, leadership is extremely important and, and that's why there's such, a, such an upheaval about this is because it says that anybody, according to the all comers policy, can be a leader on the, in these organizations. That just doesn't make any sense. All organizations have to have an identity. Uh, that's what makes them the organization that they are. I think that there's a tone at Vanderbilt that if you do bring faith into every aspect of your life, you're not welcome here. And that, that's what makes me very sad. They seem to be going against various belief systems that they seem to kind of want to push to the side or say, we don't want your belief to guide all of your actions. I actually asked the provost point blank at the town hall meeting that was held earlier this year, where is the common sense in this, in this policy? How does this work? He um, rhetorically asked me, well, Palmer, do you bring faith into every aspect of your life? And I said yes, and he told me I was wrong. And student after student in that meeting asked, do you not understand that to be a religious group, the point is that we are religious? And if we can't ask our leaders to be religious, what's the point of our group? And time and time again, the administrators heard that question and said, but we don't value that as much as we value non-discrimination. Colleges should be a place where you can say, this is what I believe. Um, I'm okay if you don't believe it. This is what I believe and I would like to live my life and conduct my organization based off of these beliefs. To me, that's what the Christian faith is all about. As far as our voice in influencing the people who are making the decisions, I feel like that's been taken away because we have clearly expressed our discontent at this policy and I don't feel like that has been um, taken into consideration as much. And I would love for Vanderbilt as an academic institution to be able to value the diversity of thought that we talk about so much and to create a space for students with these deep held religious convictions to express those in a way that benefits this campus in so many avenues. This whole thing uh, is to be a uh, to be more tolerant and to be non-discriminatory. However, in the reality, what's happening is is that it's intolerance and it's discriminatory. But if you push the administrators far enough, they will admit that organizations and members could come under and possibly have their status revoked if they're voting or appointing based on belief. They preach that they are tolerant and that, they, that this policy is to end discrimination, when in fact this policy is directly discriminating on my right to be a religious person and to take that into all aspects of my life. You heard from the students at Vanderbilt on why leadership matters. We're going to have more ahead on that topic. But again, we want you to stand with these students at Vanderbilt. It's absurd what's going on at Vanderbilt University, quite frankly. A very prestigious university, one of the best medical centers in the country, a law school, theology school. I mean, Vanderbilt University is a, a world-class institution, but they're not smart enough to understand that when you have a religious club, that those leading the club should be required to share that faith, if that's what the club so chooses. But that's not the situation. Vanderbilt says no, that if you're a Christian club or a Jewish student club, you have to allow your leadership to be open to 
non-Jewish or non-Christian students. And again, it makes absolutely no sense. And David, for the life of me, I can't figure, you said it was ideology. I mean, w is that the motivating factor here? Because it makes no sense legally. Well, right, it is, because what you have to understand is these universities have been hostile to traditional Christianity for years and years. So you're just seeing the fulfillment of this. And they tried to get rid of them, and you remember the Supreme Court cases. Right. You fought some of these Supreme right. Court cases to right. exclude the Christian view. So they've been trying for years. This is a new way to try to get rid of these Christian organizations. What's so absurd about that, of course, is the fact that we've been to the Supreme Court of the United States on these equal access type of cases. I argue cases of the Court of Appeals involving student clubs and who should be in leadership. It's never been an issue until now. Again, if you want to stand with those students at Vanderbilt University, 1-877-989-2255. That's 877-989-2255. We're sending a petition to the school administration, to the Board of Trustees, to stand firm. We've got a lot more ahead when we've come back. A college campus should be a place where all students are accepted and their religious beliefs respected. Unfortunately, that's not how Vanderbilt University is treating a Christian student group. Vanderbilt has instituted a policy that requires religious student groups to accept leaders who may not share their faith or may even be opposed to their faith. The school is requiring Christian groups to be open even to atheist leadership. And what's worse, the school has outrageously compared these Christian groups to segregationists. The ACLJ is mobilized and is advising Christian student groups at Vanderbilt, concerned parents and alumni. We need your voice in support of their religious liberty. It's time that Vanderbilt put a halt to this behavior and reverse this discriminatory policy immediately. Sign on to our petition for students' religious rights. Tell Vanderbilt University that discrimination against student groups is unacceptable. Add your name to our petition now. Call 1-877-989-2255 or online aclj.org. Welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. Vanderbilt University has a policy that says if you're a Christian club and you want to meet on campus, that's fine, but there's one condition. You have to allow your membership to be open to non-Christians. That means an atheist could be the president of the Christian club. It sounds absolutely absurd, but that's exactly the fact. Now, you've got sororities and fraternities on campus. We're going to hear from students in a moment. Those sororities and fraternities make selections. How come they're not required under the same rule? Here's the hypocrisy. The school has said we're for non-discrimination, against discrimination in all its forms. Everyone has to be open to everyone. Well, except for the very powerful fraternities and sororities on campus that exclude people every year that discriminate on the basis of sex. We're going to leave you alone. Why? They haven't given a reason. But the real reason is because the fraternities and sororities they perceive to be very powerful. They couldn't get away with it. So they, can, they feel like they can get away with it with the Christian groups. They're pursuing the Christian groups. And the students understand this hypocrisy. You know, the, you understand, folks, what uh, David just said. They, the school administration thinks, oh, the Christian student groups are not going to do anything about this. So we're just going to let it happen. Well, here's what is happening. We've uh, produced this video and this television broadcast. We've produced a video that's been uh, sent out to students around the country. We think that the American people and Christian citizens in this country are going to speak out, and they're going to speak out and tell Vanderbilt, do the right thing. Again, that's where you come in. We want to encourage you to go to your phones right now, sign on to this petition, stand with these students at Vanderbilt, 1-877-989-2255. Now, I want you to do this no matter what state you're in, where you're hearing and listening to this broadcast right now, 877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255 or aclj.org. The fact of the matter is, we need to stand with these students. Let's take a listen to what they had to say. Vanderbilt's non-discrimination policy says you can't discriminate based on sex, religion, race, sexual orientation. What is the biggest organization on this campus that discriminate according to sex? It's fraternities and sororities. And Vanderbilt has exempted those, even though initially uh, the chief legal counsel said they wouldn't be exempted. They're now exempted based on some quote, Title IX exemption, where if you read Title IX, there's nothing in Title IX that I can find that exempts those organizations from uh, a non-discrimination non policy of a private institution like Vanderbilt. If you exempt the fraternities and sororities and the single-sex choirs and all the other institutions that Vanderbilt has now exempted in this policy, the main effect is going to be on Christian organization and leadership. To me, discriminatory for Vanderbilt to exempt them and not exempt leadership in Christian organizations. You can discriminate because you don't like somebody, 
or whatever it is going to be in a fraternity or sorority, but you can't do that for leadership in a or Christian organization. Just by nature of recruitment, you're selective in membership, and by being selective, you're discriminating based on, I don't know, hair color, whether she's good at talking to during recruitment, or things like that. So I would say that is discrimination in itself. It does seem unfair that um, this policy is applying to one organization that I was a part of, Campus Crusade for Christ, but it's not applying to Tri Delta, which I was also a member of. Now they're saying anyone can come in and take over an organization and disband it because they don't like the organization. They've said that Greek organizations are somehow exempt under Title IX, and that's really not the case at all. Title IX grants Vanderbilt the opportunity to restrict or to allow Greek organizations to function if they choose to, but it does not mandate that. And so what we see them doing is selectively applying their all-comers policy to religious organizations when they could apply it to Greek life but have decided not to. It seems they've created more problems for themselves because when you hold yourself out to a standard saying you're having an all-comers policy, but when every organization, fraternities and sororities, uh, club sports teams, male and female a cappella groups, just to name a few. Uh, what, you also have political organizations and things like that. Those, by the very nature of what they are, cease to exist under a legitimate, across the board, all comers policy. They say, oh, because of Title IX, um, we're okay and fraternities don't need to abide by this. Um, that's just kind of inconsistent with what Vanderbilt's been saying all along. In fact, David Williams even said that they'd grant religious, they'd have to look into granting religious organizations an exemption if they gave that exemption to Greek organizations. Well, that exemption has clearly been given to Greek organizations and not even been considered for us. And so what's become clear over time is that the university is not interested in having a dialogue or a conversation. They're simply interested in getting through what seems like the personal agenda of a few people. I've supported Vanderbilt for 50 years, and I'm going to cut off my support if, if this policy goes through because I can't support an institution that discriminates against Christian organizations. I just can't do it. I've decided to attend Rice University primarily for the reason that they have a graduate student fellowship that isn't being attacked by the administration, that I know that I have the right to practice my faith there freely and openly. I came to Vanderbilt because of the active and very uh, loving Christian community that I found when I visited. Um, and I don't know if that's going to be here in three or four years because of this policy. I'll say this, I have loved my Vanderbilt experience and I would not trade that for anything. But over the course of my time here, uh, I've come to the point where I, I will never give money to this institution. I even had to stop being a tour guide. I love tour guiding, but I couldn't do it anymore because I couldn't honestly say that this administration values the beliefs and convictions of its students. Well, you're hearing from the students, and you've heard from the students now, and you've heard from the faculty members that are upset about this, trustees that are upset about this, former staff members. Now let's take a look at what we're doing, David, uh, particularly. Let's talk about the legal work behind the scenes, what's going on here. It's a private institution. Right. So the rules of the First Amendment, as far as the running into federal court right away under a plain, normal First Amendment challenge, really doesn't work here. What's the uh, approach we're taking? Well, they say they respect free speech. So we have written the Board of Trust to remind them of what free speech really is. We've written the Faculty Senate to remind them what free speech really is. And then they get hundreds of millions of dollars in state and federal funds, hundreds of millions of dollars. So we have worked with- Title IX, Title 10 funds. Exactly, we've worked with congressmen, we've worked with state legislators to advise them. You know, they control the power of the purse. Vanderbilt has, can do what it does, but we taxpayers don't have to give them hundreds of millions of dollars. Do you think that impact, the money, will have uh, enough of a say that the university will back off? Is that a, the best avenue of attack right now? It's possible, because right now legislators are fed up with the idea of sending all of that money to an institution that's trying to intentionally exclude the Christian voice from campus. And it's really, although it says the other religious groups too, it's the Christian groups that are really being targeted here the most. But the other groups are being impacted. Well, the other groups are intimidated enough to comply, but many of the Christian groups, are stand, they're the ones who are standing up right now. How do you comply with a requirement? This is what I need everybody to understand. How do you comply with a requirement that says your Christian club can be run by a non-Christian or an atheist or someone that's really hostile to your worldview or your biblical beliefs. That's really what's happening here. And Vanderbilt doesn't see that as some kind of bizarre situation. They're immune to understanding that a Christian organization should be run by Christians. Vanderbilt understands it's a means to an end. Ah, there and you the, go. The end is to exclude this traditional Christian perspective from campus. That's what they're trying to do. 
This is the means they've chosen to do it. So they know exactly what they're trying to do here. They, they want these clubs off campus. Oh, absolutely. You don't, you don't compare people you like, people you want on campus, to segregationists and racists. Did races. they actually say that? They actually did, said it. In a town hall meeting, they declared, and it's on tape, it's on YouTube, when someone said that we are standing up for the right of religious liberty, they co explicitly compared their view to a segregationist. Um, we're going to play that tape right now, and uh, you need to take a listen to this, folks, because this tells you what these students are up against. Take a listen. I think I speak on behalf of all, particularly Christian organizations that I've spoken with. We love the all comers policy for membership. We invite everyone to come to our groups. We would love to talk with y'all. We love each and every student of the Vanderbilt community. And we just want to say that right up front. Second of all, you talked about the need for unity at Vanderbilt. And I want to say your policy has already done that. And so if you're in this room and you oppose that policy, I'd like you to stand right now to show the unity of this campus. Thank you, you can sit down. Awesome. Parker, may I point out the obvious? We have 13,000 students. We have about 220 in this room. That is not a random sample of our 13,000 students. I would also say, Parker, you could have had that same question when they decided to integrate this university and you would have got the same result. But we integrated anyway. Uh, first of all, sir, I don't like being called a racist. Well, that's going to do it for the broadcast today. A very special program. We're going to keep you posted on this. Go to ACLJ.org. We will keep you updated as this situation continues to develop. But again, here's what we want to do. David talked about the legal strategy we're employing. We need to hear from you to help us on this. And that is not only the state legislatures, members of Congress saying don't spend the money if they're going to do this. Don't give Vanderbilt the money. But we need to hear from you. And this trustees of this university need to hear from you as well. And we want representation from all 50 states. So you sign on to this petition that's demanding that these Christian clubs be allowed to have Christian officers in leadership. Here's the number, 1-877-989-2255. That's 877-989-2255 or aclj.org. The Constitution. The Constitution. The Constitution guarantees me the right. Guarantees me the right. Guarantees my right. Guarantees my rights to religious freedom. Leadership matters. Leadership matters. Leadership matters. A college campus should be a place where all students are accepted and their religious beliefs respected. Unfortunately, that's not how Vanderbilt University is treating a Christian student group. Vanderbilt has instituted a policy that requires religious student groups to accept leaders who may not share their faith or may even be opposed to their faith. The school is requiring Christian groups to be open even to atheist leadership. And what's worse, the school has outrageously compared these Christian groups to segregationists. The the ACLJ is mobilized and is advising Christian student groups at Vanderbilt, concerned parents and alumni. We need your voice in support of their religious liberty. It's time that Vanderbilt put a halt to this behavior and reverse this discriminatory policy immediately. Sign on to our petition for students' religious rights. Tell Vanderbilt University that discrimination against student groups is unacceptable. Add your name to our petition now. Call 1-877-989-2255 or online aclj.org.